Thank you. So if I could have uh, this, Aaron? Yes, sir. So if I can call up Mr. Newman, Jerry Newman, and I think it's a David Cheney or Davis Cheney. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning. My name is Aaron Jimenez with the Central City Association. Uh, CCA commends the city for its comprehensive homeless strategy. We believe it is an excellent report with strong recommendations, and we are encouraged uh, by the partnership uh, with the county and the city. Uh, CCA offers the following recommendations as short-term solutions to address the serious homelessness crisis uh, facing the city. Ad adopt a new ordinance which regulates personal property on sidewalks. Fund additional sanitation workers to maintain safe and clean sidewalks. Hire more outreach workers to connect homeless individuals to appropriate services. Keep the current winter shelters open 24 hours a day, year-round, and fund urgent care beds to treat mentally ill homeless individuals. Thank you. Please, uh, next, identify yourself. Thank you. My name is David Cheney. I'm one of your criminalized housing providers here in Los Angeles. I wanted to, I wanted to express, first of all, my gra gratitude to Councilman Fuentes for starting to do something about these illegal um, kicking people out because of supposed illegal conversions. I had a unit in, on Bonnie Bray, three units, uh, have, it, have had it since, 19, since 2002. Uh, suddenly, after four inspections and uh, paying registration for the last 13 years, the city, the, the city inspector decided the unit was illegal and made me kick the tenant to the curb and pay him $10,000 and $5,000 almost in fines. And I asked the people out at housing, I said, how do you justify this? And the person at housing, and I, I have names for you, if you're curious of who these people are, uh, said to me, it's the money. It's for money. I said, well, that's very interesting. And I looked at all the tenants there who were there that day, and I said, you know, you've got to realize the housing department is not your friends. They will throw you to the curb for $5,000. Last year, 1,800 units converted, made Tenants kicked to the curb thank, because of the housing department. Thank you. Shame on you guys. Thank you. So if I could get Mr. Newman, if he's here, Jerry Newman. Uh, Alice, uh, is it uh, Wetzling? And uh, uh, Josh Albertson. And I think it's, uh, I think that's Don Garza. Please come forward. Please come forward. Identify yourself. Hi, I'm Alicia Witzling with the LA Area Chamber of Commerce. With, on behalf of the chamber, which represents 16, over 1,600 organizations and 650,000 employees in the region, I'm here to express our support for the council's effort to end homelessness. What you have before you is a resounding statement that the city recognizes the issue and intends to be a major part of the solution. Before the United Way and the Chamber launched Home for Good, the initiative to end chronic and veteran homelessness, our leaders in D.C. told us regional politics made it too hard to get done. This plan, in partnership with the county, proves that we can. Now let's work on getting funding at the level suggested. Um, homelessness, we know, responds to investments. We welcome the leadership of the council on this issue, and we pledge our commitment to ensuring everyone has the stability and safety of a home. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Please identify yourself. Hi, my name is Dr. Joshua Brexton. I'm a downtown resident. Um, we, j as, on behalf of myself and a bunch of my friends in downtown, we appreciate everything you're doing. Um, we hope you pass this unchanged and in the to save time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Garza, followed by Mr. Previn, followed by Mr. Gus. Yes. Well, guys, it's about time. At first, I was going to come up here and say that I do not see the law of uh, accelerating exponential returns on this um, governmental policy that you've created. But although we know that the money does, is not there, we know it's not there, we also understand we do live in an exponential world that progresses exponentially. So creating the plans now does not mean we may not wake up tomorrow with $1 trillion from the federal government. Create the plans. Keep it going. Continue to do this. Don't stop. On another issue, $2.1 million, almost in the middle of February, for El Nino. Mr. Weezer, why did we wait so long? Three people died in your district in January. We continue to work slowly in saving the lives of your constituents on the streets. I have no respect for you, none whatsoever, anymore. If you allow these people down the streets, you'll let me die on the streets. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Gus, Mr. Walsh, and Mr. Previn. Yes. Um, poverty is God's way of testing you. That is a direct quote from Herb Wesson to constituents, and I heard it directly. Until and unless City Hall changes that mindset, you're never going to fix the problem. And again, I'm going to restate that quote, that misguided quote from Mr. Wesson, that poverty is God's way of testing you. You've got to change that mentality. Jobs, development, mental health, health care equality. That's how you get people off the street. Similarly, the city council has to clean its house of people who have encouraged violence against homeless people. And you've seen the document before from Mayor Villaraigosa's office in which somebody who is still employed by the city was suspended for encouraging violence against homeless people, Jim Bickhart. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Last call for Mr. Previn. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or Jay Walsh Confidential tweeting at Hollywood Dems. I'd ask for a simple amendment which will solve the problem of homelessness immediately. And that is convert Union Station into a homeless center. Anyone who wants to go there, anyone who wants to live there, anyone who wants to cook, whatever you want to do. And every single subway station in Los Angeles, all red line uh, stations, will become homeless centers. Now, they're de facto homeless centers now. That's why you see almost no white people uh, using the subway, because they're afraid of being around minority homeless. If it is the answer to everything, we have a lot of space down there. We have the homeless can use their iPhones and their iPads. They're doing it right now. If you want to talk to the homeless, go to a red line station. Okay, thank you. As I said earlier, we were going to reopen public comment. We are already six minutes over public comment. So with that, Madam Clerk, City Attorney, I'm going to close public comment and I'm going to defer to uh, the chair, Mr. Marquis Harris Dawson. Thank you so much, Mr. President and colleagues. Uh, today's oh, and vote. Let me just say this. Those of you that have cards, we will have them submitted into the record. Sorry. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, and thank you to uh, the members uh, for being here and being focused on this very important issue for the city of Los Angeles. I also want to thank everybody who came to testify today, those who got to speak and those who didn't, uh, and the hundreds of people that shared their story uh, during this process. This committee was started uh, back in June of 2015 under the leadership of Council Member Wizar uh, at the direction of our Council President who called on the city to, to take a hard look at this, this problem of homelessness and come up with a plan that has guideposts and measurable outcomes uh, for the city uh, to follow. And so after uh, a seven-month process, we're here today uh, with a plan uh, that focuses on uh, many of the various touch points and antecedents uh, and successful programs that we've seen that deal with the different populations of homeless people throughout the city, folks with mental health uh, conditions, uh, folks who are victims of domestic violence, uh, folks transitioning out of the foster care system, folks transitioning out of uh, prison, and a host of other uh, conditions that end up in homelessness uh, on our streets throughout our uh, city. Uh, we focused on uh, some some key principles and key areas, including our coordinated entry system, the no wrong door uh, policy, housing first. Uh, we spent a lot of time and will continue in the future to deal with first responder uh, interactions. Uh, we had a joint hearing uh, with the mental health uh, committee under uh, Mr. Rue's leadership, uh, one of the uh, members of our committee with expertise in mental health. Uh, we looked a lot at housing with the housing committee, uh, governance, uh, facilities, uh, land use and zoning. And uh, almost all the members of the committee went around to uh, a range of both homeless shelters, 
uh, transitional housing facilities, permanent supportive housing facilities, and almost all of us have at le in our districts at least one encampment. Uh, and I think almost every member I've talked to has visited one encampment or worked to get an encampment moved. And so we've got a lot of, uh, we've got high touch on, on this issue. I want to uh, make sure we recognize and thank the members of the committee, uh, commi uh, members Bonin, Cedillo, uh, Price, and my co-chair, Mr. Wizar, uh, and also the council president and the CAO and, and CLA staff. Uh, and uh, as they come up uh, to, to give us an overview of the document that we're presenting uh, to you today. I also want to point out to everybody under the sound of our voice that uh, this morning we spent, I spent some time at the County Board of Supervisors, spoke with every member of the uh, Board of Supervisors, was allowed to speak, and uh, we're very excited that today, we don't know if they've done it just yet, but today they will pass a strategic plan our plan is in coordination and complementary of their plan, and so we think the people of Southern California are getting the best bang for their buck towards solving, uh, solving this part of the problem. And so we want to thank the County Board of Supervisors and also thank uh, the, leader, the political leader of our city, uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti, who's continued to press the point that we get to zero uh, homelessness in the near future. So I want to call up... Uh, our CAO and CLA who will walk us through a PowerPoint presentation. You know what, uh, let's see if Mr. Wezar, did you want to, before you begin the PowerPoint, say a few words? Sure, Th thank you very much, Mr. President. And it's exciting to be here after months of work in the committee. I want to, again, thank the committee and the, our co-chair, Marquis Harris Dawson, for getting us here today. And also the public who came forward and testified our, after countless, of meeting, countless meetings uh, what's interesting about today is that uh, we have not had, in the recent memory of the city, uh, discussion like the way we've had about homelessness. And we have not had a direction about where we want to be in the future as a city when we deal with homelessness. What's different today and the direction that we're going is that we are turning from being reactive to proactive in setting the policy direction of the city. No longer will we set policy simply by court directives and court orders about what we can and cannot be doing. We're going to be proactive in working with the countless of stakeholders and uh, supporters of homelessness to move forward in a direction that is a better indicative of what the city is about. And secondly, what is different is in the past, where our only resource at our disposal to deal with homelessness was to send law enforcement, to send our hardworking men and women in LAPD. But that should not be the approach, as you've been, we've heard over and over uh, from public speakers and from what this council has said over and over. That's what's going to be fundamentally different, because we are acknowledging that the city, under our jurisdictional powers of the Charter, have other resources at our disposal on to how to deal with homelessness and not just leave it up to the law enforcement. That has been our primary approach in dealing with homelessness in the past. What's different as well is that we are finally building the institutional infrastructure in the city that we so desperately need to handle homelessness. We need one person, and it's not going to be sporadic anymore, but our coordinator that we are putting through forward in this plan is going to provide that infrastructure along with working with the council and the permanent homeless committee and our mayor to set the direction, long-term policy direction for this city on homelessness to implement this policy and to move us forward. And that person, as we move forward, is going to build the institutional knowledge that the city so, so uh, lacks. Right now, elected officials come and go, institutional knowledge come and go, ideas on homelessness come and go, but the city needs to build that institutional knowledge that could continue even after those of us who are here are gone. And finally, there are some benchmarks that will show us whether or not we are committed to doing something about homelessness today. It's been noted that this is not the first time the city uh, stands up and says they want to do something on homelessness. In the past, it's like cyclical, like a, the economy. Uh, they come and say, we're going to do something about homelessness, and that disappears. We are not only building the institutional knowledge and institutional infrastructure, but the benchmarks we are setting forward are going to be so important. One of those first benchmarks 
is the $100 million commitment that we've made that will supplement what we are already spending on hopelessness, and that's going to come up in our budget cycle. So we're asking the public, keep us accountable. See that in that budget as we adopt it for this coming fiscal year, that those $100 million or more is in there. That's going to be our first benchmark. Our second benchmark is to assure that we have a long-term strategy in how we're going to fund the housing trust fund and the housing units we need. We have put forward a motion where our CLA and CAO is looking into the options about possible possibly passing a voter-approved bond so that we get the money we need to uh, build the housing units uh, that we need. That could either go on the November ballot or the March ballot. And finally, something that you could keep us accountable as well is that in this plan, we have to change our laws. We have to change legislation. We have to be hard at work these next few months that whatever we can do within this plan to change those rules and laws, that we do that to implement this policy. That could happen within six months. It doesn't have to happen any longer than that. Hopefully we get to work, roll up their sleeves, and deliver to the public, deliver to the people on the streets, and show that the city of Los Angeles is serious, that we are going to implement this, and those benchmarks are in there for the public to keep us accountable. And last but not least, I want to thank the CLA and the CIO for your hard work and our council president who initiated a discussion on this, set up the committees to move forward. And uh, I wanted to acknowledge uh, just one last time uh, our, our co-chair, uh, Marquise Harris Dawson, who has been working diligently on this. And along when this was first in that had committee, our council member Bonin, who is just deep into this, knows the issues inside out, and uh, all the other committee members, uh, Price, Cedillo, uh, and I, who, uh, whoever was on the ad hoc, I don't know what shift happened there, but now Felipe Fuentes was on the ad hoc. Thank you, all of you, for the work you've done, uh, the, the initiating this, starting this off. The conversations we've had both in public and off public, off the sidelines, have been so instrumental in getting us where we are. Thank you. Thank you, and I want to thank you and Mr. Harris Dawson and all of the members of the uh, homeless committee. In fact, all of the members on the council have participated in one way or the other. So we're excited about where we are today. With that said, Mr. Harris Dawson, we go back to you or do we want to go straight? Okay, so we'll go straight to uh, Miguel and Sharon and we want to thank your offices as well. Thank you. Uh, Miguel Santana, City Administrative Officer. Um, we have a brief PowerPoint presentation to give you an overview of the comprehensive strategy and then the CLA will walk through the next steps. Um, this plan is, was prepared under the leadership of Councilman Weizar and Harris Dawson and of course the Homeless Committee, the Housing Committee, the Mental Health and Health Care Committee and in partnership with the Mayor, the United Way, the County, LASA. Um, so it incorporates uh, 62 strategies to uh, systematically address the issue of homelessness in a comprehensive manner looking at the, the overall population, those individuals who are chronic homeless, uh, who've been homeless for a, a big part of their lives, as well as for those individuals who are recently homeless. So it, it seeks to provide a series of recommendations uh, to address over a period of 10 years. It was done in, in coordination with the County of Los Angeles. Uh, our strategies identify where it is that the county and the city could work together, what strategies the county will be doing on their own, and what strategies the city will be doing on its own. And the county, as uh, Mr. Harris Dawson indicated, is adopting the plan today. Um, and they are encouraging not only our city, but all the, ci all the other cities in the county to do similar work that we've done here so that there's a regional approach to the overall issue. Um, th this, this plan proposes both short-term and long-term strategies. In fact, nearly half of the strategies that are in here address the immediate crisis that we're seeing out in the streets. Um, and they are uh, they inform budget priorities that the committee has outlined. And then as part of the budget, this plan seeks to use the budget process as the first real investment in this area beyond the commitment that you've already made. It's important that you be reminded and the public understand that in this year alone, your council has doubled the amount of funding towards homelessness in the middle of the year and will continue to do so in the future. At the core of this strategy are four basic uh, ideas. The first is really to aggressively move forward in, uh, in identifying 
and uh, addressing the, the issues and the circumstances that create homelessness. From the city systems, looking at our land use policies and how we in fact uh, could start facilitating the creation of more housing, particularly for the homeless population and affordable housing overall. And in coordination with the county, the county identifies ways in which their systems actually contribute to homelessness and seek to proactively uh, uh, eliminate the loopholes in the foster care system, health care system, and justice system. And of course, there are other issues that, that result from addiction, eviction, and, and family crises that the county is proposing to address in their overall plan. At the core of the system is the coordinated entry system. This is an idea that was uh, established by the United Way and now has been part of the support of nonprofit organizations throughout the city and throughout the region to connect a homeless individual to a case manager and through that connection move that person into housing as quickly as possible. Using the tools of, of rapid rehousing and other vouchers, coordinating with the county to ensure their supportive services and addressing the immediate needs. This system is intended so that every single homeless person is identified. There's a plan to help that person move into housing and stay in housing. And in aggregate, this information will help the city and the county better understand how we could meet the, home, the needs of the homeless uh, population on an annual basis because we'll actually have real time da data on the needs of this community. Um, there are a number of strategies in here to help coordinate and strengthen the system, particularly in the subpopulations that it's applied to. And, and what we're recommending is not that the city or the county do this work, but rather that we support the work that's already being done by the nonprofit community. You can't solve homelessness without housing, and this plan makes uh, a, a number of recommendations to improve and maximize the, the number of housing units that are available, both in terms of permanent supportive housing as well as rapid rehousing for someone who's recently homeless. And of course, this plan, as Mr. Cedillo indicated, also fully adopts all of the recommendations of the Housing Committee and the plan that's been adopted under his leadership. And then the final piece, of course, is the services, and this is where the county role is so critical. The county uh, it tends to strengthen its outreach to this community, ensure that mental health services are provided to them, health care services and other services as needed. On the city side, we are recommending that we actually, as we begin to restore services, move aggressively to hire former homeless individuals as part of the city family and working in partnership with the Department of Economic and Workforce Development to do so. The other unique aspect of this plan compared to others is that it actually identifies the ROSA responsibilities of the various jurisdictions involved. It outlines how the city, where the city should make an investment, how the county will take on its responsibility in partnership with us, what the role of LASA would be, and we recommend a number of strategies to strengthen that role so there's better coordination on an ongoing basis between the city and the county. And then ultimately, how do we strengthen the infrastructure of nonprofit organizations that already do this work every single day and try to tie together one systematic approach to provide those services to this community and then an ongoing system in place both within the city family to coordinate this work as well as an ongoing way of integrating that work with the county. Um, this plan talks significantly about the kind of investment that would be necessary. And as you've heard, it's, it, it's not going to be something that's going to come easily. Uh, we anticipate that there would need to be nearly a $2 billion investment in housing. And we're recommending two different kinds of housing. Uh, the first uh, kind of housing is done through vouchers and other kind of rapid rehousing to move people into home into housing immediately. Um, this is a system that has proven to be very effective, particularly in the mayor's efforts to uh, address homelessness among veterans. It's not only proven to be effective here in Los Angeles, but around the country. And as we move people into into those situations, into uh, housing, uh, through the vouchers, we will also we also recommend that we build a capacity of affordable housing throughout the city, and um, the overall cost 
uh, as I mentioned, is about $2 billion. We need f funds for both flexible uh, purposes to help fund the voucher program, and we also need dedicated source of funds for purposes of, of building housing. And the important part to mention in making that investment is that the city's portion in that investment is a small piece compared to the, all the, the other dollars that we leverage, both through private investment, tax credits, uh, funds that may be available at the state and the federal governments. Uh, I won't go into all of the, the different strategies, but in here you will find, as I mentioned, 62 different strategies that seek to both to prevent homelessness, strengthen case management, um, increase the housing stock that we currently have through a variety of different initiatives, including addressing some of the barriers in our planning process, um, supportive services, and then um, uh, and then uh, overall governance. And with that, I'll turn it over to the CLA. Good morning, Sharon So, CLA. So with regard to the next steps, uh, if the council approves the comprehensive strategy as presented to you, and of course there are a series of amendments as well, uh, we will begin the implementation phase for this. This will involve a series of reports back to the various committees. Um, we will be publishing um, the final strategy as adopted by this council, and then we will be reporting to you on the various funding options that could be available to you. Um, this was pursuant to a motion that was already introduced and we plan on coming back to the various council committees to discuss the funding options specifically. Um, those funds that may be city controlled right now, uh, potentially new fees, uh, ballot measures, um, and there are some important timelines uh, to keep in mind with regard to any potential ballot measures. If we were to propose something for November, the council would need to take official action um, sometime by the end of June. If we were to go to the March ballot, the official deadline would be sometime in early November. So um, with that, we, uh, as part of the strategy, um, our offices will be working on each one of these. We will be refining any cost estimates as well as coming back to you with timelines on implementation and we expect all of these to actually be coming back to the various committees of council uh, for implementation. Well, thank you for the presentation. I'd like to recognize Mr. Koretz